Paul talking to the church at Thessalonica. He said, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father. Now he talks about remembering without ceasing, and that goes back into verse 2. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. Uh, for I think there are certain things that uh, we need to do as members of the body of Christ. Uh, our salvation has nothing to do with keeping the law. We're not under the law. We're dead to the law. And we're not saved by works of righteousness, which we do. We're saved by grace. But yet there is uh, works that we do that is in the body of Christ. And our relationship to one another is very important to the Lord and to the ministry that he gave us to do. The Lord left you here for a purpose. Uh, he could have saved you, took you right out of here. He can take you out of here any time he gets ready to. Uh, we're here because he left us here for a purpose. And I, I want to always do his purpose. And I know what my purpose here is. I know what the Lord leaves me here to do. Uh, I am to try to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. But here's one thing that I want to bring out before we go on, is our prayers for each other. We, Paul said here in verse 2, we give thanks to God always for you all. Number one, your prayer ought to be a prayer of thanksgiving for one another. Even though you disagree with one another. But as a member of the body of Christ, we ought to be thankful for each other in that body. Because we are here for a purpose, and the purpose, we all have the same goal. Notice what he says, hang on to Thessalonians and come over to, go back to Ephesians. And notice in Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3, Verse 8, Ephesians 3, 8. Unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. They're unsearchable. The things that Paul wrote down about Christ and the things that Paul preached about Christ, you can't search them out in the Old Testament. That's why it's a mystery. It wasn't revealed until the Apostle Paul. Uh, notice what he says there in verse uh, 5. Talking about the mystery of Christ. Verse 5. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Well, how was it revealed? It was revealed by the Spirit through the Apostle Paul, and Paul began to preach it and wrote it down. And we have it today. Notice back in verse 8, he said it's the unsearchable riches of Christ. Verse 9, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery 
which from the beginning of the world hath been hid, where? In God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Then this miss it was hid in God. It wasn't revealed until the apostle Paul. And Paul said one of our duties is to make all men see what is the fellowship of this mystery. When you think about fellowship, I think about fellows in a ship. We're all in the same boat. We're all traveling the same way. There's a fellowship among the passengers. If this thing goes down, we're all going down. We're all in the same condition. We're going down with it. When me and June went on that cruise, it was the first day, and I got up there on that top, and I looked out, and I couldn't see land no more. I thought about this verse, fellowship. We're all in the, if this thing sinks, we're all gone. There ain't no walking on water then. We're gone. We're all trapped. Half the boat wasn't going one way and the other half going another way. We're all going the same way. We're in the body of Christ. We have the same goals. We have the same aims. We have the same, I mean, fellowship among one another. We ought to pray one for another and be thankful. <coughs> now I'll ask you something. Are you thankful for the members of the body of Christ? How about those that you don't like? <clears throat> now, come on now. You know there's people in the body of Christ that you just don't like. They might have a different attitude. They might, have, they might not do the things you do. They might, they might just be like an old grunch. I mean, I mean just a grouch. Grunch, grouch. Uh, do, you, do you thankful for them? How about the people that's in the religious system that's caught in a web there and they criticize you a little bit for believing what you believe? They have a testimony of salvation. Are you thankful for them? Folks, I'm thankful for the body of Christ. I'm thankful for people that are saved by the gospel of Christ and every person that's in the body of Christ, every one of them, they got there by the same gospel that I got there by, and I by believing that Christ died for all of our sins. How about you? Paul said we were thankful. We have a purpose to make all men see what is that fellowship of the mystery. Notice back in uh, where he says, and back in First Thessalonians, he said and giving thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. Now that's my second thing. We're not only to be thankful for people, but do we pray for people? Do we pray for their blessings? Do we pray for their well-being? Do we pray that God would open their eyes more to the truth. Those that are in the religious system, those that have a, a, they have a testimony, do we pray that somewhere, Lord, use me. Open a door for me to talk to them. Back in Ephesians again. Notice what Paul says about this. In Ephesians chapter uh, 6. Well, we, uh, let's go to chapter 1 first. Vision is a great book. We're looking at it in our studies, Bible study. Ephesians chapter 1. Notice what he says here. Paul talking about in verse 16. You want to know how you to pray? 
You want to know what to pray for? Well, here's one of them, verse 16. Cease not to give thanks for you. Paul didn't even know these people. Do you understand? He didn't even know them. Look in the, where he talks about in verse 15. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith. He never saw. He heard about their faith. But he was thankful for those people. There are people in the body of Christ that we never heard or seen in our eyes. We hear about them. But our prayer life, look what he said. <clears throat> Verse 16, Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Well, what are you praying about? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation uh, in the knowledge of Him. Then Paul's praying that God would give them the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of knowledge in the, uh, the knowledge of Him. Verse 18, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, Folks, that's what you ought to pray for those people that don't believe the Word of God rightly divided. But they say, I'm saved. I've trusted Christ as my Savior. But they're caught up in a denominational system. They're caught up where they cannot, they don't see the things that you're saying. They're not taught like you're taught. So what do we do? We're to be thankful for them and pray that God would give them the, that their eyes of their understanding would be enlightened to the truth of this book rightly divided do you do that I fail a lot of times not do that I don't do that all the time but look what he says he said that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling I'll ask you something do you know what the hope of your calling is Come on. <laughs> you ever thought about finding out? Do I need to pray for you that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened? That ye may know what is the hope of... If I come around and say, I want y'all to take a piece of paper. I wouldn't do it, let you stand up and do it. I wouldn't want to embarrass nobody. But if I gave out a book of piece of paper to everybody and say, write down what the hope of your calling is, could you do it? Say, no, I don't know if I could. Well, why not? Then find out. You're waiting on me to tell you, aren't you? Look on, he goes on. He said, uh, uh, what is the hope of his calling? And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believed? According to the working of his mighty power. Well, what is that power that Paul wanted them to know? What was that mighty power that was to usward when we believed? When he raised him, verse there, well, verse 20, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. What about that? What is that power? Paul wanted them to know what that power was that was toward them that believed. When he raised Christ up, folks, you know what that power was? That was the power of God to forgive you of all your sins. And until he raised him up, he could not have done that. Because you are an old sinner. And you didn't do nothing to deserve it. But Jesus Christ went to that cross and died for all your sins. All your sins was put upon Him. And Jesus Christ died your death. And He took your place. But yet God had to do something. So He 
forgave all of those sins to raise His Son up. And that power is to you, Lord, who believe. Aren't you glad? Now you won't hear that in other churches. Sorry. But that's what Paul wanted these people to know. And look in chapter 6. In chapter 6. Prayer. You notice when Paul talks about praying one another. He always talks about being thankful for one another. He didn't say, now y'all like each other. So well, I don't like you. Well, I don't care. It don't change my relationship with the Lord one iota. I'm still saved by the grace of God. But one thing you've got to do, you have to be thankful for me if you're going to follow the Lord, and you need to pray for me if you're going to follow the Lord. And I don't know why anybody wouldn't like me. I'm a likable, lovable young man. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6. Notice what Paul says. He said in verse, uh, I'm going to read verse 17. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now watch it. And pray in what? How long? Always. With all prayer, supplications in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. Now watch it. And for me. Why did Paul want the church at Ephesus to pray for him? That utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Folks, Paul wanted to boldly. What, that's assurance of what he's saying is the Word of God. It's true. You can always tell whether somebody believes what they're teaching or preaching by how they present it. Notice what he says. That utterance may be given unto me. You know what you ought to pray for one another about? And pray for me? I, I want you to pray. That God will open up doors that I may speak boldly the Word of God to people. You see, it's not a matter of me opening the doors. I don't go around and uh, wear a pen, say, I'm a Christian, talk to me. I don't go around and everybody, I, I don't want to be a nuisance. But I want to be available for the Lord to use me. And when the Lord opens the door, I want to have something to say. I want to be able to utter the truth of the gospel. I want to be able to utter this Bible and have assurance that what He did for me, I can relate to others. How about you? I'm not telling People say, well, I don't believe you ought to wear a sign, but I believe you ought to be available. There are people that need the message that we have of salvation. There are people out there that you cross paths with every day of your life that need the words of life from you. There are people today that you, you'll meet tomorrow that are entangled in the religious system that would love to hear something about what Christ did for them and would love to see a difference in the Word of God rightly divided. People say, well, you can't go. Listen, folks, you saw it, didn't you? I saw it. 
I come out of a religious system. I seen the the difference between what I was raised in and what the truth of this Bible is. If I can see it and if I can believe it, there are other people out there that is in the same shape that I'm in. So we are to pray. We are to pray that the Lord will make us available. Are you available? Now the flesh, the flesh, boy, the flesh will fight you tooth and nail, man. The flesh, they don't want to do. He, that old man, he wants to be liked. He don't want to bring up nothing that's going to cause controversy. He don't want to bring up nothing that he might have to go to battle about. Or, and, they, and there's people out there that want to argue and all that. Folks, oh, I don't, might not have all the answers. Well, I don't have all the answers, but I doubt very seriously I get asked all the questions. And it's like George said, if you don't know, say I don't know. But tell them what you do know. When the Lord opens the door, don't let it close. If it's nothing more than just talking about the word, the difference between Paul and Peter, and say, study it for yourself. There's a difference. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Simple as ABC. Remark, write, up, write these, this verse down. Turn with me and look at Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. You dealing with somebody in the system? Just take them to Acts 10. And look in Acts chapter 10. I might as well preach till the rain quits because there's nobody going down there when it's raining like that. So, so I was going to let you out early. Sorry. No. Acts chapter 10. Here's, here's Peter. Here's Peter that preached a sermon and 3,000 got saved. Preached another one and 5,000 got saved. I think this man's pretty powerful, don't you? Here's a man that's filled with the Spirit of God on the day of Pentecost. Here's a man that's the leader. He's the one that had the revelation, the foundation of the Jewish church. When the Lord said, Who do you say that I am? Peter says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he says, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So Peter had a revelation from God the Father who Jesus Christ was, a man filled with the Holy Ghost, a man preached and thousands got saved. I I'd say he's a pretty powerful man, wouldn't you? Now look what he tells this Gentile in Acts chapter 10. In Acts chapter 10, verse 34. And by the way, these according, they're wanting to know about the Lord. Verse 34, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Wow. Is that the word of God? It is, isn't it? Verse 36, The word which God, God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, He is Lord of all. That word, I say, the word, Jesus Christ, I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from, the, uh, from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, 
how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are what? Witnesses of what? of Jesus Christ and his earthly ministry and all the miracles that he did and the resurrection that God, when he raised him from the dead, Peter said, we're witnesses that he is who he said he was. Well, who did he say he was? The Christ, the Son of the living God. That's the foundation. And it has to do with fearing God and work of righteousness. Now turn with me to Psalms and look in Psalms. Hang on to Acts. Psalm 85. He said, He that feareth him. Psalm 85, 9. Surely, His salvation is nigh them that fear Him, that glory may dwell in our land. They had to fear God and do what? Work righteousness. Fear God. Now look in Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Now, you don't have to take them to Psalms. I'm doing this for you. But Romans chapter 3. Paul said in verse 18, There is no fear of God before their eyes. That's the condition of the world. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. And although they're guilty before God, there's no fear of God before their eyes. People don't fear God today. They say what they want to about the Lord. They don't fear Him. Now look at this thing in Titus. Now here, you go to Acts. You see, he that feareth God and worketh righteousness. Now look in Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. In Titus chapter 3, notice what he says. Titus chapter 3, notice in verse 4. But after the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared. And by the way, when did that appear? It wasn't when he was a baby in the Mary's arms. That was the appearing that he appeared unto the Apostle Paul. That's grace, folks. Now verse 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, But according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Are we saved by works of righteousness? Peter said, it's he that feareth God and what? worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Paul said, it's not by works of righteousness but according to his mercy he saved. Now I ask you, who are you going to believe? Come on, folks. You've got to believe one or the other. They're not saying the same thing. Either Paul's your apostle or Peter's your apostle, but they're not preaching the same gospel. Look in Acts again. In Acts chapter 2. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Acts 2.38. Notice what he says. Acts 2.38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. When would they get the Holy Ghost? A little light from the class. 
They'd get it after they got baptized, wouldn't they? And they wouldn't get baptized till they repented. They had to repent and then be baptized. Then they'd get the Holy Ghost. Am I right or wrong? Well, let's see what Paul says about that. Turn to Baku to Ephesians. In Ephesians chapter 1. In Ephesians chapter 1. Though notice what he said in verse 12. Ephesians 1, 12. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Now watch it. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed that word of truth, ye were what? Sealed with the Holy, uh, Holy Spirit of promise. Well, when did these people get the Holy Spirit of promise? After they heard the gospel of their salvation and believed it. Now, where was their baptism? Now, come on. Where was their repentance at? You know how they preach repentance? Repentance in the, is a mind change. You change your mind about something. I changed my mind the night I got saved. I really saw myself as a lost sinner. I changed my mind. I wasn't good. Look back in Thessalonians. People misquote this when they talk about it. In 1 Thessalonians. Notice what he says in verse 9, chapter 1, verse 9. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9. I guarantee you go out there, now you get baptized. <laughs> you get a good washing. Look in verse 9. For they themselves show us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. They said, okay, there's your repentance. But notice what it did, notice what it said and what it didn't say. He said, how ye turned to God from idols. It didn't say how ye turned from idols to God. You, you, there is a difference. They turn to God, and by turning to God, they turn from their idols. They didn't turn from their sin to God, and God saved them. That's the way repentance is put today. It ain't turning from nothing. It's just turning to the Lord for salvation. And when you turn to the Lord for salvation, you're turning away from ever, all the other religions. Paul and Peter never preached the same gospel. In fact, look in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. See, I like it when it's raining like this. Y'all feel trapped, don't you? I got you here. Tornado warning. There's one brewing up here too. I'd rather be in here than to be. Amen. See, this way, you can't see nothing coming. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17. David, if you see the code, he's watching. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17. For Christ sent me to... Not what it says, is it? For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Did baptize. 
Turn with me to Mark and look in Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. In Mark chapter 16, notice what he said. I want to read verse 4. Talking to. And after he appeared unto the leaven, Peter there? Peter would be there, wouldn't he? As they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they which had seen him after he was risen. They didn't believe the women that saw. Verse 15, And he said, uh, And he said unto them, Go ye in all the world, preach the God. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Did he tell them to preach the gospel? Yes, he did. Look in Matthew. In Matthew chapter 28. Chapter 28. I'm going to read verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into the mountain where Jesus had appointed them. Come, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever. I have commanded you, that be the law of 5, 6, and 7, the law of Christ, or whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the Lord. Did he tell them in verse 19 to go into all the nations and baptize? Did he send Peter to baptize? Folks, you the same. Paul and Peter, they never, ever preached the same. And you can't get saved under Peter's gospel. There are religions today that tell you and be baptized and then you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, Acts 2.38. They stand on it, they believe that, and people, and people by the multitudes believe it. They have baptisms for, like George talking about, children washing away their sin into the church because that's where the salvation is at, in the church. Salvation today, Jesus Christ, it's by believing the gospel of Christ and it's by submitting to it, believing it, depending upon it for your salvation. And God will give you eternal life right there, right now. Hit where you're sitting if you don't have it. Paul is your apostle. He's the one you're to follow. He's the only one that God gave the method of salvation and the dispensation of grace. We're to pray for one another. We're to try to show people right division. To make them see what is the fellowship of the mystery. What the what fellowship body of Christ. We're to endeavor in Ephesians 4. He said to in the unity of the Spirit. We don't make unity. The unity's in the body. We're in trying. We strive to keep that unity. And there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one you call it. There's oneness in the body of Christ. And yet we are divided and split up doctrinally. And people are in confusion today. And people take the Bible... And they make it like a tossed salad. Just mix it all up. And it's no good. Now, I'm done. You better get where you're going to get. Let's stay.